Hi, this is Gloomy Fish and this is a sketchbook tour. As you can see, this one is especially thick. Look at my boy. Thick as hell sketchbook. Let's go. So this, this is one of my custom dolls, Kogita. I haven't actually made any dolls since I made her. I've started like two. This is her. She has no relation to the character from Pokemon Legends Arceus, though she is named after her, literally because of all the cogs. <laughs> So this spread is kind of about self-care, this drawing included. It's just like stuff I drew freehand, I guess. Oh my gosh, look at this. I am so happy with that. <laughs> and locker number 666, so of course it's got something gross in there. This was my kind of bad attempt at origami. I tried. <laughs> I couldn't quite figure it out. But, I, uh, it's good enough, I guess. <laughs> I stuck a little book in my sketchbook. A sketchbook in a sketchbook. Most of the pages are blank. <laughs> um, price tag. Oh yeah, didn't I stick a pen in here? Yeah, I forgot to mention the pen. I, I stuck this pen, this pen stopped working, and I stuck it in here. Um, because I liked the pen. It's got like this little wave pattern on it. So yeah, I cut a hole in my sketchbook. I've cut quite a few holes in this sketchbook. I had been watching like a lot of sketchbook like TikToks and it was giving me a lot of inspiration. I haven't really got much to say about these pages. <laughs> uh, um, this is a key ring that I got years ago i think it was for my 12th birthday no, i just stuck it in my sketchbook <laughs> oh you might recognize this it's the rick roll <laughs> i did a video just showing this because i thought it was funny but yeah it's the it's the rick roll um This is um, Fukuse. I was actually trying to do a warm-up doodle of Fukuse because he's fun to draw, but it ended up being like this full-on like drawing inspired by the song um, The Beginning of the World uh, or Sekai no Hajimari. Got Kanjo. Some creepy stuff. So I tried that sort of crayon scratch art thing, but it went really badly. I think I used the wrong paper and the wrong crayons. Uh, this was when I found out I was aromantic. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, impromptu coming out. I'm Arrow Ace and I am also a gender. <laughs> This is the, the all-seeing eye, or second sight, or whatever you want to call it, from um, Hypnospace Outlaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vaporwave page, for some reason, also everywhere at the end of time. I got back into everywhere at the end of time for like a, like a hot minute back then. This was when I painted with coffee. I really want to do it again, it was so fun. This page smelled so nice for so long. It doesn't really smell much of anything anymore. Uh, 
Argos and Mr. Plant. This was based on um, a bad case of stripes, which I didn't read when I was a kid. I, I kind of wish I'd read it as a kid because it seemed like a rite of passage to get terrified by this book. But I thought the the art in the book was just like so cool. Like it's so surreal. It's baby's first body horror. I freaking love it. <laughs> Um, this was a dream I had. I hate these pages. Yeah, I drew these in like 2019. Um, Nimona. A flip phone, I guess. I was, I like became obsessed with the Y2K aesthetic for like a short while. <laughs> More Y2K stuff. Some badly drawn Pokemon characters. A clown. This is a window. A sort of dream core collage. The one successful attempt at origami that I did. <laughs> Some silly OC stuff. A granny referencing Dashcon for some reason. I don't know. Some more OC stuff. <laughs> this thing. This was like a leaflet from the planetarium from like 2019. I decided to draw on it. Just um, completely defacing a little star chart. This is kind of a continuation of the comic from the previous page. Um, tiny paper fan. I, I, I don't know. This is fan art of the song Lullaby of the Leaves. It's a really old song, but if you're familiar with Everywhere at the End of Time, it is the song that was used for Misplaced in Time and Drifting Time Misplaced. And also Ella Fitzgerald did a version, and that's my favorite version. Some creepy things, these are some OCs. Oh, this. Um. So when I was defacing that planetarium leaflet, I was surprised to find out that Leo, the constellation Leo, looks like a mouse. I don't know what this page is all about. Oh, this is some Omori stuff. We got a friend behind the door. And if you've seen my previous sketchbook tour, this kind of thing, you've seen this kind of thing before. I am like, I, I love doing these. Uh, this is when I watched Has Been Hotel, and when Mimsy first showed up, I was like, I know her voice. Turns out, yeah, Sarah Styles, the same one who voiced Spinel, so I thought I'd draw them together. <laughs> Um, this is me drawing on post-it notes and stuff. A silly joke about dates. Resetti in Wild World, I used to ab absolutely hate him. I used to be scared of him. <laughs> I used to get nightmares about him. And I would just kind of skip his dialogue without really reading it. It just felt like he was shouting at me and I don't like being shouted at. But I actually like read all of his dialogue and oh my god. Okay, why was I scared of him? He's hilarious. <laughs> He's actually hilarious and I love him. This is someone's OC, uh, Dreamcore Tweets on Twitter. This is their OC. 
Uh, this was me redesigning one of my OCs. And this was the final result of that redesign. This was inspired by someone on YouTube. Jack Mansion. Jack Mansion, I think was his name. Uh, he does like chaotic, um, sort of expressionistic art in YouTube shorts. And he kind of makes me think of like the chaotic version of Bob Ross in a way. There's a bunch of stuff about my OC Strato. This was inspired by when RT Game played Project Diva. <laughs> and he was just kind of describing himself as Miku's tambourine guy, so I, I, I just drew it. <laughs> this was when I, as someone who isn't a furry and doesn't really want to be a furry. No, I have nothing against furries. I just personally don't really get it. I don't really think it's for me. But despite all of that, I, on a whim, decided to make a fursona. And this is them. Uh, they don't have a name. I just call them my I.I. I. Gremlin <laughs> because they're an I.I. I. and I.I.s I. are gremlins. <laughs> this was when Pokemon Legends ZA was announced. My biggest hope for Legend ZA is to find out, maybe find out more about this guy. And underneath this burb, we've got my very rude eye eye gremlin and just some random doodles I guess. Whip! Whip! <laughs> this is stuff from a game called Yonder the Cloudcatcher Chronicles. It's a really cute game. I don't like this page. This is Night, Night Vale fan art. I went to see um, a live show of Welcome to Night Vale for the first time ever. It was so good seeing a live show of Night Vale. <laughs> so I, I just decided to draw um, a bunch of characters. This was kind of similar to that one that I did inspired by Jack Mansion. This was just really messy. I think this one I was just messing around with textures and stuff. This is Sienna, uh, one of PM Seymour's characters. This comic at the top was based on a dream I had where I tried to eat mum's laptop. <laughs> I took a big bite out of it and it was very crunchy. <laughs> this was when Volo was introduced in Pokemon Masters and this was me. <laughs> Sacrificing a lot of money to try and get him. <laughs> I did manage to get Volo, though. I did manage to get him. Mm. These are just some random doodles. So this was when I was <laughs> trying to get Volo and um, came to the realization that, oh my god, Te I'm technically gambling. <laughs> it's not going to become a habit, though. I haven't spent any money on that game since Volo. Uh, this was when I actually got him. Yeah, this sort of brought back my Volo brain rot for a bit. I think this might be a cockroach girl. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this is. This is Volo. I'm really happy with this story. <laughs> it's kind of a redraw of something I did in 2021 as well. <laughs> this is just like a sort of cute pastel page, I guess. This is a, a lesson in human anatomy. It is 100% biologically accurate. <laughs> Why would you think it isn't? Everyone has leg silk moths. So I decided to cut holes in my sketchbook again, but I decided to turn it into like a two-part art. <laughs> two-part art. <laughs> Yeah, and then, then there's this side, um, but I also cut like this little open outdoor 
and there's a Pikachu and a Boo. This was, I found this doodle I did at school when I was like 16, I think. <laughs> but I redrew it anyway. <laughs> there's Kogita again. This Kogita. I was playing around with pencils and crayons. <laughs> this is crayon, this is pencil, this is kind of a mixture of both. A scene girl. Me looking in the mirror. I thought I looked like Jeff the Killer that one day. A girl who showed up in a dream. Her name was Denise and she was really sweet. Uh, Tara the Android. <laughs> Something someone said in a dream. Arvin. Arvin again. Juliana. Some Pokemon cards. I don't play the card game. But yeah, cards are pretty. This is a human oin cologne and grumpig as a couple because I did a playthrough of Scarlet and I only used Pokemon that I got from Surprise Trade. It wasn't a Wonderlock because I didn't want to do a Nuzlock. So it was it was just literally a normal playthrough but with Surprise Trade Pokemon and um, I had a Grumpig and an Oin Cologne. Yeah, and there's Nimona. Uh, Ingo and Larry, because Ingo's like really loud and Larry doesn't really emote at all. <laughs> I love them both. Uh, this came from a doll box and I decided to cut it off and put it in a little pocket. <laughs> Argos. Oh, this was the doll that this thing was on. This was a guy from a dream. He was sort of like two-faced. This was how his face worked. L very cursed land shark. I don't know. I drew that ages ago. Uh, the first mesmerizer fan art in this sketchbook. <laughs> I can't remember why I drew this. I think I just, occasionally I just want to draw something weird, so I just kind of make something up as I go along. <laughs> These were redrawn from some things I did in 2016. And then I, because I was looking through a lot of 2016 sketchbooks, I got really nostalgic for uh, 2016. So I decided to draw on this page are all of the OCs that I made in 2016 that I still have. Because there were a couple that didn't survive the year. <laughs> These are also all redraws from stuff I drew in 2016. Oh god, this guy. So this guy... This guy here was from a dream. He was an alien scientist. I had to be part of like some social experiment he was doing. And when everyone was done, he gave us all like a bag of yarn. <laughs> like, I don't know, I guess he just uh, j was just like, um... Humans like yarn. Let's, let's let's give them yarn. I don't know. That that was that was what we got for participating in this weird social experiment, which was basically just like it was basically like a murder mystery party. It was weird. I want to make him into an OC, but I can't think of a name for him. I'm kind of stuck on Doctor Broccoli, but I don't want that to be his actual name. That could be his nickname. <laughs> Uh, some digital circus stuff. <laughs> I love Jax because he's the worst. <laughs> a clown girl, like, smoking like a party blower, like it's a pipe. Well, she's got one in her mouth like it's a pipe. And I kind of redesigned Icon because I thought if she is, re if she represents the Windows 7 blue screen, then her design should look less webcore and more fruit to get arrow. This is inspired by... Um, I, I can't pronounce the name, I think it's like Ketsuku or something. But yeah, this is inspired by that person. This moth and this 
creature uh, from yonder, the Cloudcatcher Chronicles. Uh, this is Airy. She's the mother of all sprites. And this is one of the giant silk moths. I've also been inspired by Katsuki. This uh, thing, this long cat that's saying, oh, her lips Frankenstein. That was a dream I had back in like 2015. <laughs> I was trying to design a biblically accurate angel like I always friggin' do. <laughs> just a messy thing that I did. I just got the urge to cover a page in newspaper and then just paint over it. Miku Miku Beam. This was my first attempt at watercolor crayons and I love watercolor crayons. They are the best. See, I use like an empty tissue box um, as my paint palette for when I did this <laughs> and uh, I kind of smushed the box together and then turned the results of that into some paintings and this is one of them. This is Argos in the maid dress um, from that one video that Ashigaravi did. <laughs> this was the other side of that uh, tissue box paint palette. I decided that the shape of it kind of reminded me of a heart, so I turned it into a sort of weird heart. And um, this is probably the thickest page in my sketchbook. This is when I got back into Shante for a bit. Um, Brassius appreciation page. Very, very creepy mermaid with a guy's head, I guess. <laughs> um, somehow this was inspired by Shante. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> I did these with watercolor crayon. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, this page was inspired by an artist I think it's pronounced Pulsella Lulu is fan art of the comic Pinky and Pepper Forever who knew uh, a comic about two characters from a forgotten doll line going to hell would be just so great <laughs> I don't know uh, a sort of dream ish page. I drew Isla with watercolor crayons. I was- oh yeah, these are done with watercolor crayons as well. Oh, this is, um, uh, Ali Electric from Novi Stars. I- <laughs> I managed to shove her head onto a, onto a monster high body. I murdered my Venus McFly trap doll for this. <laughs> It took so much effort to get her head onto this doll because Novi Star neck pegs are a lot smaller than Monster High ones, so uh, yeah, it took a lot of effort, but it was worth it because now she is articulated. Mm, this is a uh, robotic who used to be taller than Ali Electric. <laughs> Shocked at how much she grew over a short amount of time. <laughs> I think I used um, watercolor crayons for this one again. And this is my favorite Novi star, Tilly Vision. She was my dream Novi star. I actually managed to get her and I was very surprised because Novi stars on eBay are so goddamn expensive because I think they're just really sought after now, I guess. And, um,. This was the first time I saw a Tilly Vision doll that was actually, like, a reasonable price. I've only been a doll collector for just over a year, but that was cool. That's uh, already my favourite moment of being a doll collector. <laughs> There's Tilly again. I want to draw her more. I love her. Mr. Plant, Isla, Anna, this very weird collage oh this weird as hell drawing uh this was inspired by something and i can't remember what <laughs> the inner brain rot came back again 
Not that it ever really left, but yeah. Uh, more NF stuff. Uh, you might recognize this one because I, again, I did a video on it, but now this time it, ha it has a background now. This is the interactive mesmerizer fan art. Woo! <laughs> I think this was inspired by Cad's Q. I made a pocket full of prompts I can use when I don't know what to draw. Uh, these were done using some of the prompts. This one was Neon Eyes and Weird Core. This one was Angel and Cat, Mushroom and Monochrome. I did a digital version of this. I I replayed um, Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk and its sequel. Uh, I replayed them because it had been a short while since I played them, especially the first one. And these, this was done using the the prompt pocket. Looks that was Vaporwave and Space. This was Body Horror and Steampunk. This was OC and Flower. I think this was inspired by Cad's Q as well. Uh, this... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this was also inspired by Cad's Q. This was done using the prompt pocket, but I can't remember what the prompts were. I cut more holes in my sketchbook. Uh... So there's a watermelon behind that door, so we've got white space. King Headspace! <laughs> White space, headspace. Oh my god, I'm I'm so happy with that. A spinny thing. I forgot I did this. I should do more of these. This was fun to make. Uh, Lacey's pet shop. This was when I was worried that my cat didn't like me anymore. <laughs> This sketchbook is so interactive. <laughs> I want to... I, I like making interactive things in my sketchbook. Uh, this is a empty sticker sheet. I got a collage. And I decided to cut around it because... I mean, why the hell not? Got Luca and some Cyclops cats. This was a dream. This was such a weird dream. I was going to keep her as a character, but I decided against it. Some stuff. I think this was inspired by Cat's Q as well. Oh my god, they were inspiring me so much in this sketchbook. <laughs> oh, this page. I figured out that if you had, if you have square paper, then you can do traditional pixel art so I was kind of obsessed with that for a while there's a girl with a skyscraper for a head why the hell not um oh and this is a page of um Immigrantis Road which is by a series by Ghost Tundra the same person who did Lacey's games She was from a dream. She was the devil. <laughs> but she was actually really nice. Uh, I don't know what this cursed drawing is. <laughs> and this really bloodshot looking eye. This was from the prompt pocket. This time it was kid core, web core and music. So I drew like a kid core Miku on a music player. Some pose practices because I'd noticed my drawings were stiffening up again. Uh, this was from the prompt pocket. It was fish and moth, so <laughs> that was pretty easy to do. Uh, this was- I copied a photo of a- I copied this photo while I was looking for pose references. I just thought she looked really cool and I wanted to draw her. You might recognize this. Little pixel Miku sleeping in a little bed in my sketchbook and it's really hard to put her in this thing if you saw the oh my god 
If you saw the short where I where I showed this off, you notice that I start to put it in and then it kind of jump cuts. That's because I was struggling to put her back in. <laughs> this is a little house room house thing that I made. <laughs> Mmm, I don't like this page. Uh, okay, so underneath this page is a lot of gore. It's my goriest page underneath, so... One, two, three, boom! Here's the secret gore page. <laughs> it's probably not that bad. I'm really desensitized to my art. This was inspired by Shintaro Kago. I'm sort of like weirdly fascinated by the idea of Guro, like I'm not into it in that kind of way but I sort of appreciate it from an aesthetic standpoint as someone who likes body horror and surrealism. I don't know. But I do have a limit to how much I can take. Uh, more mesmerizer. <laughs> Mm, I think this was from the prompt pocket. One of the prompts was steampunk. I think there was, I think it was steampunk, monochrome, and dream? Magic? Something like that. I don't Dahlia from Pokemon. My favorite in the Gen 4 Battle Frontier is the Battle Arcade, um, where you can find her. And um, yeah, the Battle Arcade is really fun. I, I wish they'd do Battle Frontiers again, because they were so fun. <laughs> mm. Sometimes I get obsessed with these two OCs of mine, um, Nos and Austin. They're a couple. <laughs> so I just decided to draw them. Uh, the yellow one who wasn't in Mesmerizer, aka Akitaneru. <laughs> uh, and then a comic of Neru showing up late to Mesmerizer. And this was when I was just getting really desperate to finish my sketchbook, so I just kind of stuck a bunch of stuff on this page. This, this is a tissue that is way too nice to use. <laughs> And this is the final page, I think. Yeah, and a bunch of Cyclops cats. So, oh my god, I made it through this literal falling apart at the seams sketchbook tour. <laughs> um, yeah, I still don't know how to end videos.